kneeling with her face down and her chest to her knees, and place the stretcher in Trendelenburg position. Assess the patient for signs that childbirth is imminent. The mother is pushing and has contractions. The mother has the urge to defecate or bear down. The mother says, the baby is coming. The perineum is bulging, crowning, and the neonate's head is seen at the vaginal opening, even between contractions. If the neonate's head can be seen at any time in a woman who has had previous vaginal deliveries, birth is imminent. Preparation. Obtain a brief history to determine the following information. The expected due date. Any complications with this pregnancy. Whether a multiple birth is anticipated. Whether the membranes have ruptured. The color of the amniotic fluid. Assist the mother with the breathing techniques she learned in prenatal classes. If she has not had prenatal classes, instruct her to inhale through the mouth and exhale slowly through pursed lips. If necessary, breathe this way with her to gain her cooperation. Position the mother in a dorsal lithotomy position with her knees bent. If necessary, raise her hips by placing her buttocks on the underside of a bedpan. Observe the perineum for crowning, prolapsed cord, or presenting part other than the head. Prolapsed cord. Instruct the mother not to push because a cesarean delivery will be necessary. Elevate her hips or place her in the knee chest position, kneeling with her face down and her chest to her knees, and place the stretcher in Trendelenburg position. Administer high flow oxygen through a non rebreather face mask if available. Place a gloved hand into the vagina and elevate the neonate's head to relieve pressure on the cord. Maintain this position until delivery occurs. Monitor the cord for pulsations. If this position must be maintained for a prolonged period, keep the cord moist with a towel moistened with 0.9% sodium chloride solution. Prepare for an emergency cesarean delivery. Breach birth. The presenting part of the neonate is the buttocks or feet. If one or both feet are the presenting part, the presentation is known as a footling birth. See limb presentation below. Support the neonate's legs and the buttocks after they are delivered and apply gentle downward traction until the axillae are visible. Gently lift the body to deliver the posterior shoulder and then gently lower the body to deliver the anterior shoulder. Place your index finger in the neonate's mouth and let the neonate's chin rest on the palm of your hand to maintain the neck in a flexed position. Use your other hand to support the neck and shoulders. Have an assistant apply downward pressure over the suprapubic region to push the neonate's head under the symphysis. The head should then be delivered spontaneously. Limb presentation. Instruct the mother not to push because a cesarean delivery will be necessary. Elevate the mother's hips by placing her buttocks on the underside of a bedpan, on a pillow, or on a couple of folded blankets to slow the birth. Administer high-flow oxygen to the mother through a non-rebreather mask. Prepare for an emergency cesarean delivery. Completing a vaginal delivery. If time permits, cleanse the mother's perineum with soap and water or pour antiseptic solution over the area, moving in an anterior to posterior direction. Place a clean towel, drape, or absorbent pad under the mother's buttocks. Drape the perineal area with sterile towels or drapes. If time permits, obtain vital signs and fetal heart tones. Instruct the mother to pant as the head is delivered to help control the urge to bear down. Support the perineum just above the anus with a hand, sterile towel, or sterile gauze dressing. As the neonate's head emerges, place gentle pressure on it with the hand that is not supporting the perineum. Support the head with both hands and allow it to rotate naturally. The neonate turns and faces one of the mother's thighs. If the membranes are still intact when the head is delivered, snip them with scissors over the nape of the neck and pull them away from the neonate's face. 
ascertain whether the umbilical cord is around the neck. If the cord is around the neck, loosen it gently and attempt to slip it over the neonate's head. If the cord is too tight to slip over the head, immediately clamp the cord in two places and cut it between the clamps using sterile scissors or a scalpel. If a sterile implement is not available, use a clean one. Deliver the shoulders by placing the palms of your hands on the neonate's head, one on each side, and applying gentle downward traction to allow delivery of the anterior shoulder. If assisting with delivery of the posterior shoulder is necessary, gently direct the neonate's head upward. Perform the following steps if the shoulders become lodged in the pelvic outlet after delivery of the head. Shoulder dystocia. Attempt the McRoberts maneuver by placing the mother into an extreme lithotomy position with her legs drawn all the way up to her chest. If needed, have an assistant apply suprapubic pressure while you apply gentle downward traction on the fetal head. This may free the trapped shoulder. If this procedure fails, instruct the mother not to push because a cesarean delivery may be necessary. Administer high flow oxygen through a non rebreather mask to the mother. Prepare for an emergency cesarean delivery. If the shoulders are delivered without complication, anticipate that the neonate will be slippery and support him or her securely while the rest of the body emerges rapidly. Note the time of delivery. Keep the neonate at the same level as the mother or below until the cord is cut. If the neonate does not require resuscitation, delay cord clamping for at least 30 to 60 seconds after delivery for both full-term and preterm infants. Place two clamps approximately four to five centimeters, one and one half to two inches from the neonate's abdomen and cut the umbilical cord between the clamps using scissors or a scalpel. If the neonate does not require resuscitation, dry and warm him or her before placing him or her skin to skin with the mother. Cover the mother and neonate with dry, warm linens to maintain the temperature. Be sure the neonate's head is covered. Assess APGAR scores at 1 and 5 minutes after birth. Place the neonate to the mother's breast unless he or she is unstable or requires prolonged resuscitation. See Neonatal Assessment and Resuscitation below. Watch for signs of placental separation, which occurs approximately 5 minutes after delivery. The umbilical cord may lengthen from the vagina. The uterus becomes firm as it contracts and changes to a globular shape. Bleeding may increase as the placenta separates from the uterus. Instruct the mother to bear down to deliver the placenta. Apply gentle traction to the umbilical cord if needed. Save the placenta in a basin or plastic bag and keep it with the mother. Palpate the uterus frequently during the next hour. It should feel firm and be about the size of a grapefruit. Massage is not necessary as long as the uterus is firm. If the uterus does not feel firm, gently massage it by placing one hand above the symphysis pubis and the other on the top of the uterus. Ensure that the palms of the hands are facing each other. Gently massage the fundus of the uterus down toward the lower hand. This massage helps the uterus become firm and contract. When the uterus is firm, stop massaging. Place identification bands on both the mother and the neonate.